Hi, this is Josh Beiser from GameWisdom.com. Hope you enjoyed this critical thought, a detailed discussion on game design, and be sure to subscribe and you can pitch future critical thought topics. Alright, for today's critical thought, we're returning to the topic of movement and how it's a very simple mechanic, but there are very subtle details that can make or break a game, especially when we're talking about 2D design. If you missed my spotlight video, I've been playing The End is Nigh, which is the spiritual successor to Super Meat Boy, and I'm finding it not as fluid as SMB. And this is one of those little tiny details that can come back to break a game if you're not careful. And of course, if we're talking about controls, we gotta get the gamepad ready for this. But in earlier Critical Thought, we've talked about the differences between 2D and 3D movement, and of course about primary and secondary actions. And when it comes to primary, the biggest one of course is movement. And if you have played any video game over the last decade or so, you probably know very well the thumbstick is the primary action or primary input for motion and movement. And in the earlier Critical Thought, I mentioned about why the thumbstick is superior in two-dimensional spaces compared to arrow keys or any combination of keys on your keyboard. And the reason is that the thumbstick basically condenses the four movement, again, right, left, up, and down, of course, uh, keep in mind that things are reversed here, into the single input of the thumbstick. Whereas on a keyboard, you have to use four fingers to get the same effect. And when you're trying to use four fingers, and control other actions, it becomes a lot harder. Now, this next part, this is where we start getting into some of the trickier aspects of movement in video games. Depending upon the game in question, you can use key presses and you won't notice a thing. It depends upon how movement is defined by your title. In a lot of video games, I'm going to pull up the stick here. When we talk, I'm trying to get this right, center, okay, that's good. In most video games, movement is not as simply, or it's not as simple as I push button, character goes in the direction I push. So many games feature different kinds of movement velocities or speed, depending upon whether there's a button modifier or with the press of the thumbstick. So for instance, I'm going to see if I can get this just right. There's a difference between pushing the stick like this versus going like this. And in some cases, we even go even more fine, but each little push affects the momentum a little bit more. Now, when we talk about the difference between the gamepad and a keyboard, it has to do with the black and white nature of the key press versus, again, the tactile or fine control over the thumbstick. When I press a key, it's on or off, yes or no, black and white, etc which means the second I push that key, my character is going to start moving. And because of that, if we're dealing with a game that has multiple speeds of movement, the key press is inherently inferior to it. Because when I'm pushing a key, oh, I hope I didn't just hit someone there. <laughs> when I'm pushing a key, I can't tell the game that I want to push my key very slightly or a little bit. This is where the idea of using a run modifier button can also help but it still doesn't feel as familiar or as easy compared to a thumbstick. When we talked about primary actions and the little tricks that make your game UI easier, I mentioned about how to use secondary associations, and the thumbstick is a good example of this. We know by instinct that pushing the stick like this is different than this. And if we're going full, it's going to be faster than at half, or very slightly. Another major point about control six and again movement in a 2D space is again with how you place them on a thumbstick. Again, there is a difference with how the computer reads it when you go like this versus this. And again, it may be hard to see, but there is, I'm subtly moving the stick ever so slightly. Now again, for a lot of 2D games, or for most games in general, you're not going to have, again, like 5 to 10 different movement speeds based on moving here, to here, to here. Normally, it's for most games, 3 is considered a fair amount. You have like the 
very sneaky walk, you know, barely moving at all. You have a walk, and then you have full tilt. And again, some games may just have a sneak and a walk, and then run will be assigned to a modifier button. But the point is, when it comes to controlling a character and make it effortlessly, you need to start at the fine motion. Again, just Gently, I'm not going to pick up the gamepad just yet. Gently just moving the stick or gently pushing a button. And the reason is, if you're trying to challenge a player with uh, tricky platforming or very uh, button heavy platforming, as in, I'm going to be walking and then there's a jump, and then quickly another jump, and I'm just doing this constantly in a very short period of time, you need to be able to. Uh, properly get the player or get the character to move and make those micro adjustments. Anyone who's watched Super Meat Boy knows just how important those micro adjustments are. There is an inherent difference in your movement or your jumping velocity if I'm holding down the run button while I'm in the air versus letting it go, depending upon how fast I'm moving when I'm jumping, wall jumping for modifying, and so on. Now, we can get into a whole big conversation about momentum and physics, but that will probably be, we may want to say that for an advanced lesson. Now, if we're talking about a platformer that features very basic movement and momentum, as in you only have one speed, and it's not really built on that kind of split second or pixel specific jumping, then you can use a keyboard and it's not that bad. Something like what I played recently, like uh, Momodora, um, All Was Awakening, uh, I'm trying to think of the other one, Whole New World. These are platformers, obviously by their design, but they're not as reliant on very detailed or very tactile jumping compared to something like Super Meat Boy, The End is Nigh, and even something like Dust Force. Now, Dust Force is a few years old at this point, but it's a very challenging 2D platformer. And it's a, also a really good example of how much a gamepad versus a keyboard can impact the difficulty of that game. When I first streamed it all over on Twitch, I tried using a keyboard and it just wasn't working for me. Again, it was just putting too much calculations for me to work with the keyboard with four different buttons while trying to process what I'm trying to do in the air. And that's the other big point. If you're going to try and do micro adjustments, one input is infinitely better than trying to manage four. And you can see the difference if you've watched those plays of mine when I decide to remap the keys to the gamepad. And that's another interesting point. Even if you don't have the different degrees of movement, again, versus this, versus this, simply just tying your inputs to left, right, up, and down makes it feel more comfortable. But when you're trying to design your gamepad or your game functionality like this, it's important to be able to properly read the analog stick. Again, for a lot of games, I'm gonna see if I can angle this just right. If I push to the straight, straight to the right, but let's say if I push up and to the right. Now, when the gamepad's like this, how is my character going to move in your game? In some 2D games, up right can mean going still going to the right. In other games, however, if I'm going like this and I'm walking, I will automatically grab a ladder. Or it will kind of start to feel a little weird in terms of it may try to read both right and up at the same time. Again, if you're going to make use of a input from a gamepad or a thumbstick, it's important to understand just how far you want to go with that. And like I said, if you're going to just build a platform built on one movement speed and nothing else, then you can get away with a keypad or just simply a thumbstick, which is still the superior option. Now, when it comes to using a modifier button, this goes as far back as Super Mario Bros. for the NES. And having a modifier button is a really good trick for when you're trying to have these different kinds of movement, and again, the importance of making those micro adjustments. And like I said a few minutes ago, and this will take us into talking about the N is Nigh quickly, 
it is always better or it feels better when you're designing your gamepad or your movement in your game to start with the fine action before you get to the gross or you know again full tilt full run etc and this is the problem I have with the end is nigh versus super meat boy the one of the biggest differences between the two is in the end, in the end is nigh that was not grammatically easy to say there is only one movement speed and that is full run. There is no crawl, there is no gently walking. Basically, I am always going full tilt. And that may seem perfectly reasonable, except there's one problem with that. Going full tilt completely ruins fine motion or fine movement in your game. Basically, going back to the game payer, which you're seeing a lot of for today's video, there is no difference between me going like this versus me going like this. And that is very dangerous. When you're asking the player to make pixel perfect jumps and movement like that, not being able to gently move the character or make that fine adjustments means that it's very much just all or nothing. And I've had plenty of cases where my character, even when I'm just trying to get him to just slightly move over, will just run straight off the ledge and get himself killed. And when you're dealing again with a game that requires very precise movement, especially in the air, not being able to gently control your character makes things harder than what it should be. In uh, The End is Nigh, for instance, there are many jumps, especially those where you have to jump from a hanging or from a ledge to another ledge, or the ever popular leap over spikes that hang on a ledge that's on the opposite side of it, that I'm basically having trouble getting the read. I will either overshoot the jump, as in I don't push it, I'm not holding back enough, or I just completely undershoot it. So like if let's say for instance that this is the platform, I will land either here, or I'll land over here. And maybe like if I put like a little tiny finger, this will be better. And again, because of how the control schemes or the movement works in the end is nigh, it's making it harder than what it should be. In Super Meme Boy, again, because it uses the run modifier, and you're essentially being able to make those adjustments in air, it becomes a lot easier to have that tactile feel. The same goes for a game like Dead Cells, where there is a difference between how I'm moving when I'm going like this versus full. And again, it doesn't sound that big of a deal, but when you're trying to just carefully get to the edge before you make that jump, being able to move the stick like this is critical. And when you don't have that, it becomes a different game. And here's my question for you folks watching this. If you've had a chance to play Super Meat Boy and The End is Nigh, what do you think about the controls? Not about the jumping or the edge jumping mechanic, but simply the feel of playing as Ash in The Edge is Nigh. Wow, I just combined every game there. Ash in The End is Nigh versus Meat Boy in Super Meat Boy. For me, I'm finding Super Meat Boy feels better in my hands. And again, that goes back to the fact that there are different elements of movement in the game. Now with that said, we're going to wrap things up here. Like I said at the start, this is not a topic we're going to solve in 15 minutes. Movement is a very complicated element of your games, especially when you're trying to build a hardcore or expert level platformer. When you really need to have that fine movement to have any chance of making those jumps. Now again, with that said, for expert players who are playing basically in speedrun mode, and they're not even... They're not, basically taking the time, it's all down to muscle memory, that's a different story. But, if you're expecting everyone to be able to play your game, you it's better to start again with fine motion rather than just only having one. And when it comes to movement in 2D platformers, you can really see and feel the difference, depending upon how the game's movement or momentum was designed. For those of you watching this, one final question. Can you think of 2D platformers where the keyboard was superior to the thumbstick? I'm wondering that myself because I haven't seen or played any on my own. And for those of you watching, can you think of 
great examples of games where the feel is right. And to make things easier, I want to stick with 2D since that's been the focus for today's critical thought. So again, when you're playing a 2D game, when does it feel right? Or what games got that movement and momentum right or perfect? Let me know in the comments below, but thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to suggest a critical thought or other vlog topic, let me know in the comments below. But be sure to check back daily for more discussions on game design here and on GameWisdom.com, where we examine the art and science of games. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And come back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on game development, be sure to check out game-wisdom.com. Follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day. And to help support everything that I do, you can find me on Patreon under GWBicer or Game Wisdom. Your donations can help to keep things running, and when you hit some goals, it will be more content for everyone to enjoy. So, thanks again for watching, and be sure to come back for daily discussions on game design on the Game Wisdom channel.